we had a little bit of an issue here where my swale meets the spillway. Uh, we ended up having to cover up the swale, so I ended up putting a piece of pipe through the swale, some extra pipe that we had, so that way the water could conceivably get back over and uh, get into the pond if we get some excess water from the swale. Still working on the spillway here. If the water really gets running, we should have a nice aeration effect of the, the water falling off these ledges and then eventually emptying into the pond. So we'll have to dress this up and conceal this liner, but uh, it should look pretty nice once it's all finished. Yesterday we had an issue with this pipe leaking where it's coming through the liner. And um, we went ahead and fixed that. So the way we fixed it, instead of using, we had corrugated, black corrugated through here, and that's very difficult to seal because of the corrugations. So we went ahead and swapped it out for uh, white PVC or solid PVC, and then um, and then we used an adapter so it doesn't because we were also leaking at the connection. So we made sure we had an, a good adapter to go um, back to uh, corrugated there. So that's all squared away and fixed. So we were able to finish the entrance to the pond where the silt pond overflows into the feature pond, the fish pond. And what we did was we went ahead and ran a liner from the silt pond down the bank here and we ended up stepping it in with little terraces and uh, overhanged it with some very large rocks. That way when we do get some water running through here we can get some aeration as the, as the water drops off uh, each, each ledge. Also looks kind of nice. Uh, the only thing left to do is I'm going to have to uh, cover up that, that liner. So I've got some more stone that I'm going to lay tomorrow to cover up the liner and then I'll come in uh, right up to the so stone with compost and then I'll seed in a good, uh, a good clover ground cover. I also set up, I've got an aerator that runs there into the feature pond and I set it up uh, on a nice little platform and so that's going to be a little bit nicer. I'm putting the final touches on the gray water wetland area and I'm planting these reeds because reeds are really good at filtering the nasties out of your gray water. So the positive with reeds is they are by far the best accumulator of these nasties but the, the bad thing about reeds is they, they can be very very invasive. So if you're in a northern climate, I'm in zone 6 here, if you're in a northern climate like I am reeds are perfectly fine. They're, they're not near as invasive, especially if you're doing a gray water system like mine that's aligned. It's essentially like a, a, a shallow lined pond. It makes it a little bit more difficult for them to venture out beyond uh, the liner. And if it's dry around the edges, they're, they're not going to spread quite as badly as they would in a warmer and wetter situation. So I would be careful. If you're in a, a warm tropical climate, I would be careful about using reeds. There are other other plants that you could choose that uh, might not filter the water quite as good but might be a little bit less uh, invasive. So the other thing to think about is I, I thought about there are other water type plants that you could certainly eat that would be nice to use as space but to be honest with you I don't want to be eating food uh, from plants that are growing in my gray water. So this this stuff is essentially for the filtering process only. Now granted you could plant stuff that might be good for the bees, uh, bring in the pollinators, bring in the uh, predator insects, stuff like that, but I wouldn't plant stuff like this to eat. I mean we, I got plenty of other other space for planting uh, edibles. Anyway, so ideally you could put the crown of the plant, the crown being right here at the base, the growing point, uh, about two inches below the water level. Now I'm not, to be honest with you, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put it down in the water, and the reason the reason that is is because I want the roots to to go down deep and get at the get at the, get at the the, the gray water. Uh, also, I've got a couple inches of stone at the top to prevent mosquito infestations, so it's going to be hard to plant it that deep. Otherwise, it's going to be buried in you know four or five inches of stone, and I don't really want to do that. But the reeds are pretty. 
I mean, <laughs> about as hardy as you can get. So there's really no worries about uh, there's really no worries about it not growing well or not doing well because I didn't get exactly the right depth. You know, as long as they have access to sunlight and access to water, these guys are going to be absolutely fine. So the gray water comes in from the house there at that T. That's also connected to my sump pump, although that doesn't run real often. But uh, anyways, so we've got the pipe buried underground here. I did actually go ahead and repair all the area because when we got the equipment in here and just all the working and, and you know we did a lot of damage. So I put in a layer of compost and some clover just to uh, get that all neatened up. And the gray water comes into the wetland, which is basically a 100 square foot shallow pond. It's about two feet deep and it's lined. And, uh, and you go ahead and you plant your accumulating plants. And I use reeds. So the gray water comes in here and um, the reeds clean it up and then it exits over there where you see that white pipe. And then we'll, and we'll go around and I'll show you where, it, uh, where that water eventually exits. I've got a garden hose running right now just to, just to show you how this, this whole thing works. Now I've got this pipe exposed, which I'm gonna cover up with this uh, gravel, but just so you can see it, the water basically comes in, and this is the level that it needs to exit. So once the gray water comes in and, and fills this pipe, and it exits right out there, and then when it tees down to the silt pond and then overflows into the main uh, feature pond. I'm also picking up the drainage water from my French drain here that runs along the back of the house, and it's also collect, connects to a couple of swales. So we've got uh, that drain pipe that runs, and it basically we're teeing in to the wetland area, and we come right around to the silt pond. And this is the entrance to the silt pond. So you can see the, the water from the hose running out of the entrance, or out of the pipe that exits into the silt pond, and the silt pond overflows just over here through the spillway. Now one thing I don't really particularly like about the silt pond is that it is a lined pond. Now when I did the gray water wetland I had no problems using a, a liner there because I, I, it makes perfect sense. First of all you don't, I, you, you could do a clay lined but uh, it was just the soil wasn't particularly good and I would have had to truck in a lot of clay and the other thing that's nice about using a lined pond for the wetland areas, that's all covered with rock, so you can't see any of the liner whatsoever. You, you've got the gravel that goes right up to the rocks, and I use a rock border, so that made it real simple. Now in this situation, for the silt pond, didn't quite work near as well, so you can see a lot more exposed liner, which I don't particularly like. Now the one, the other, the one good thing about it is eventually this pond's going to silt up, and you won't be able to see near as much of the liner as you do now, so the silt's eventually going to cover this as uh, the pond's here longer. So this is the exit to the pond. And we actually get a fair amount of a nice little waterfall, waterfall going off just a, I mean, it's really just a hose. So imagine how much water flow we can get with, you know, a good size rainfall plus the gray water wetland plus, you know, all the drain pipe and the swales and, and the surface runoff from the ponds. I think uh, we can get a pretty nice flow Another thing, another reason why I wanted to do a nice little waterfall before this water gets into the pond is it will help to oxygenate the water before it gets into the pond. So given that I've got, I've just started stocking the pond. I put minnows in last weekend to get them to uh, spawn and hopefully grow before I get, before I stock it with my edible fish. But this will Having the oxygenated water is certainly nice for them.